Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today I'm going to be talking all about juries at music school, what they are, what you can expect if you've never had a jury before because I know that it sounds scary because it's a word you might not have heard before and it's a whole new thing that you're going to have to go through in music school. So for most music schools or conservatories, whatever you'd like to call it, all performance majors have to do a jury at the end of each semester. Some schools have different requirements where it's only if you do a recital. Some have requirements where you only do a jury if you don't have a recital. There are different requirements at every single school, so it's not going to be the same everywhere you go. I'm mostly sharing my experiences and experiences that others have shared with me. So a jury is basically the final for your private lessons at the end of each semester. So at my undergrad school, that was basically for every type of music major, not just performance because my school was a very performance-based school. Even if you weren't a performance major like music ed or music te technology or music therapy, you had to do a jury either way just because they were so focused on performing and being active playing musicians. At other schools, that might not be the case. It might only be for performance majors. So at my school, no matter what type of music major you were, if you were taking private lessons that semester, you had to do a jury unless you were doing a recital that semester instead. So the way a jury works is you walk into the room, whether that's, I've done them in studio spaces, classrooms, and on a concert stage. So they can take place in a variety of different situations, almost like a college audition would be. Um, just think it's the same kind of location as a college audition. So you walk in, there's a panel of judges, most likely people within the department that you're in. So if you play the violin, probably the violin professor, viola professor, maybe cello professor and or double bass professor. Those are the types of teachers I've had on my juries. If you play a wind instrument, it's probably a panel made up of wind professors. You get the idea. So I usually had three people on my panel in undergrad and in grad school, I think it was about the same, either three or four. So these teachers are likely people that you already know and they care about you and they want you to succeed. They're not hoping that you fail. They don't want, they don't want to kick you out of school. It's not that kind of thing. So anyway, you're going to walk into the room. The jury will be there. They will have, um, you'll probably have to fill out some kind of rubric sheet with your information on it. You hand that to the judges and either you choose your first piece or they choose your first piece. Whatever you play, you play. Um, at my undergrad juries there was always sight reading also so I would play the rep that I had prepared and then I would play through the sight reading material and then they say thank you, I'd say thank you. I would pick my music up off the stand, which I forgot to do in, I think, my second jury ever. <laughs> so you pick your music up off the stand, you thank them, and then you leave, and you're done, and you wait to receive your grades. That's how a jury goes. So lots and lots of people get really, really worked up and nervous about juries because it's a performance where you're graded and you're judged, and that's, that's a scary situation to be in. Even if you're a seasoned performer, this can be very scary. The thing to remember is that these are likely teachers who know you and they want you to succeed and they are not grading you based on other people's success. They are, ba they are grading you based on how you've progressed through the semester, through the year, through your time at the school. They're just seeing that you are learning and you're not slacking off. So let's get into some common questions regarding juries. So the first common question is, how is music chosen for my jury? So if you are currently in music school right now, as I post this video, you probably have your music chosen because your jury is probably in the next week or so. But if you are not in music school right now, every school does things a little bit differently, which is going to be my answer for a lot of today's video because requirements are different at every single school and sometimes from department to department and from teacher to teacher. So in my experience in undergrad, I would choose the music with my teacher, but sometimes she would choose the specific movements I would prepare for the jury. So like towards the beginning of the semester, we'd work together to figure out what kind of music I wanted to play that semester. And, you know, throughout the semester, we'd create goals. And then some of those goals would inevitably be for me to play this for my jury. So it was 
more of a collaborative experience in undergrad for me. Some departments have pieces that you have to play for certain juries, and those are just requirements within the department or with your teacher. So sometimes you can choose the music, sometimes your teacher chooses the music, sometimes it's collaborative, and sometimes it's just the way the school works. So there are a variety of different ways to go about it, but your teacher should let you know towards the beginning of your first semester how that's gonna work. What should I wear? So for juries, the most important thing is to look professional and to feel comfortable. So if that means concert black for you, then great, wear concert black or business, I don't want to say casual, but, um, you know, like businessy attire. I always thought of it kind of as like a chamber music recital where my group would want to wear a color. So maybe I'd wear like a colorful dress and not a black dress, but like a colorful dress, maybe some tights and either heels or flats, usually flats because I'm more comfortable performing in them. And if I needed a, like a black sweater over the top of it, then I would. Or sometimes I'd wear like a dress shirt, like a colorful dress shirt and black dress pants and then flats. Um, so like that kind of businessy concert attire, even if it's not like concert black, something that you would wear to perform in because you want to present yourself in a professional manner and you want the judges to know that you're taking your education and your career seriously. Do I need an accompanist? So this can vary from school to school again and from department to department and from teacher to teacher. So in my experience in undergrad, if I played a piece that had a piano part, I would almost always practice with an accompanist and I'd perform with her at the jury. So it's very highly recommended, at least in my experience and the experiences of my friends, it's highly recommended, but you know, sometimes there are circumstances where you can't get one and then they're like, well, you should have a pianist, but like you couldn't, so okay. And there were other semesters where I played completely unaccompanied music, so I didn't have to worry about finding an accompanist. And some schools are really, really good about accompanists where they'll provide one for you and it's worked into your tuition. And then other schools <laughs> don't have any kind of thing like that and you have to find someone and pay them for each rehearsal and each performance. And that can get a little complicated so it's always good to figure out how these things work early on so that you're prepared for whatever your school situation might be. Do I need to memorize my music? Again, this varies from school to school and from department to department and from teacher to teacher, depending on what they're teaching you, what that teacher's personal preferences might be from the requirements of the school. There are a lot of different ways to go about this for juries. So in my experience in undergrad, I never had to memorize anything for juries. The only time I had to perform by memory in undergrad was for the annual concerto competition. That was required to be by memory, so that's what I did. But for my juries, I always performed with sheet music because that's what me and my teacher preferred. And so we didn't care about having it memorized. And then at the school that I did my master's degree at, everything by Bach, showpieces and concertos were required to be played by memory on juries, recitals, and other like big performances. So <laughs> I avoided playing any of those for my recitals um, just because I didn't want to play by memory. So every school does this differently. Of course, talk to your teacher and see what the requirements are. I know at the school that I did my master's degree at, there were like posters all over the music building saying if you play any of these types of pieces they have to be memorized for your jury so like i already knew that when i auditioned at the school because i was just walking around and i saw that so always bottom line is try to find out what the specific requirements are in your situation as early as you can like within the first month or so of the beginning of your first semester just so that you're prepared and you know what to expect going forward and your teacher should always be open and honest with you about this. They shouldn't be hiding secrets from you about juries. The, these should always be open conversations. What is the panel listening for? So the panel is made up of teachers that likely know and care about you, at least in my experience. So these teachers are not looking to fail you. They're not looking to kick you out of the school. They're not trying to say you're a horrible musician and you need to practice more. So again, it's not a competition between you and another person in your section. Instead, it's a way to show the progress that you've made in the semester or through your time at the school and to show 
what you're doing well and to get feedback from teachers that you don't play for regularly so they can tell you like maybe this would help you get better maybe you could do this next this would be a great thing to perform somewhere else they can give you feedback that you might never have thought of before and so that can be really cool and a really great way to learn so in the fall of my sophomore year the morning of my jury my viola professor actually made a Facebook post where she said like, I'm so excited to sit in on violin and viola juries all day today and listen to beautiful music. I'm so proud of the progress my students have made this semester. It was something like that. And reading that as I was getting ready for my jury just made me feel so much more at ease because I realized that they're not trying to fail me. They're not trying to be super harsh and critical. They care about us and they want us to succeed. They want us to have successful careers and they want us to feel, hopefully they want us to feel good about ourselves. But it made me feel so much better that they were excited to listen to us and it wasn't like a super boring drag to them that they had to sit there all day and listen to violin and viola music. But just even hearing that made me feel so much better. So know that these teachers are not all mean and they do not not care about you. They care about you, hopefully. At least in my experience, they care about you and they want to hear you play beautiful music. They want you to succeed and have a great career. How much music do I need to prepare? So again, this is a conversation that you'll have with your teacher and every school has a different kind of time limit or time requirement for juries. So I believe for me, it was either a 10 or 15 minute long jury all through undergrad, except for the spring of my sophomore year, which is called the sophomore screening. And I believe that was 20 minutes worth of music. It was just extra long to be sure that they wanted you to stay in the music program. Um, everyone kind of freaked out over the sophomore screening, but it was it was an extra five minutes of music. It was like, it was like I prepared about the same amount of music. They just didn't stop me like they usually did. So, um, it was it like it's not as long as a recital and you and your teacher will decide together how much music is enough or your teacher will just tell you how how much music is enough and in my experience they almost always stop you like after the exposition of a concerto or you know after like the first two sections of a bach piece um I, it's very it was very rare that i actually played through everything that i had prepared for a jury plus in my experience, I also had to do sight reading. So it would be like a couple lines worth from like a piece of chamber music or an etude or something. I just had to look through it, think about what I had to do, play through it, and they'd say thank you, and then I'd say thank you, and then I'd leave. And that was it. Is it scary? So juries can absolutely be scary. It always depends on your situation and your relationship with your teacher and other teachers in the department and how you feel performance anxiety wise. So if you know that you often experience performance anxiety, it can be very helpful to find ways to help manage that. And I have a few tips and tricks that I will link up above. I have a whole video on performance anxiety tips and I also have a vlog from my recital jury only from a few months ago. I can't believe that was this year, but yeah, I also have that. So they'll both be linked up above if you want to see some of my tips and some things that I actually do when I get nervous. So for me, that's a lot of breathing exercises because I find if I breathe deeper, it relaxes my breathing, it steadies my heartbeat, and I don't feel so physically nervous. And if I feel less physically nervous, I'm able to control the mental aspect a little bit better. So if you feel like it's scary, see if there are ways that you can find to help calm yourself down. And unfortunately, finding ways of calming down takes a lot of trial and error. But know that the teachers and the panel care about you and they want you to succeed. They are not looking to fail you or make you feel horrible about yourself. Okay, so I asked some of my friends over on Instagram to share advice they wish they had known before their first jury. So, so I'm going to share those pieces of advice with you. The first one is from my friend Anita at Viola Birdie 98. She said, it's about growth, not perfection. Just focus on what skills you've really improved. That's absolutely true. And also I am so, so glad that she realized this because we went to school together and I saw how nervous she would get for juries. And I, I would be able to see the progress that she had made every single semester and know that she was going to be okay in the jury because she had made so much progress and she was doing so, so well. So I'm so glad that she experienced that growth for herself. And it's absolutely true. It is about progress and not perfection. It's okay. Like they are making their, it's a way of measuring 
what you've learned and that you are making progress and that you're putting in the work. That's all it is. It's not about having a perfect performance because perfect performances don't exist. Next is from Flatondo Practice Studio. Juries don't want you to fail, they actually want you to play really nicely. Absolutely true. No one wants to hear bad music. They don't they don't want you to have a bad performance because then they'd have to sit through it. Like I mean, that sounds kind of mean, but would you go into a jury panel and think, oh, I want this person to fail? No, you probably wouldn't. You would probably just want to hear a good performance. You don't inherently want people to do badly, right? The teachers on your jury panel likely feel the exact same way. Strings of Steel said they want you to succeed. Absolutely true. That's what I'm trying to drive in. They want you to succeed. They don't want you to do badly. And so many times we just think they want me to fail. They want to fail me. I'm gonna get kicked out of music school. But no, they don't. They want you to succeed. And all of these people are saying the same things. So please believe it. The literary violist said a jury is just an opportunity to show what you have learned. Progress, not perfection. See, everybody's saying the same things. I love it. Nanette Plays Viola said it's just an opportunity for you to share what you've worked on that semester. Simple as that. Just an opportunity for you to share what you've worked on this semester. Progress, not perfection. It's all that. Harry said, relax, everyone wants you to play well and the juries are usually very low stress, at least to the judges. Yeah, judges are like, oh, it's jury day again. Time to sit and listen to music. That's all it is to them. It's just listening to you, providing some constructive criticism, telling you what you're doing well, and that's it. And then usually they're done with their semester and they get to relax for a month or two. That's all it is. So I hope this video helped you understand what a jury is if you are new to music school or the music world in general. If you have any other questions about juries, please leave them below. And if I get enough questions, then I'll make a part two to help everyone feel as relaxed as possible. I know performing can be really scary and lots of aspects about music school are not talked about enough. And I had no idea what a jury was until after I was already in music school so it would have been helpful for me to have a video like this for myself just to understand what it is and to relax it's really not that bad it's just another performance and you're being graded on it just like so many other things that you do in music school it's really okay so to everyone performing a jury in the next couple of weeks good luck i know you're going to do great i hope you get some really good constructive feedback back and i hope you have a great performance and learn something from it Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider supporting my content on coffee. I post new videos every Sunday at noon, so I'll see you again next Sunday. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.